Helion's mission is to build and deploy low cost electricity for the whole world. We know the rest of the universe is powered on fusion and I believe that we can do it too. People have been asking about the private company Hellion Energy, a startup that has attracted attention for its ambitious goal of achieving commercial nuclear fusion. It presents itself as the company closest to building a working fusion power plant, one that could produce electricity directly from the reaction itself without the need for radioactive fuels or massive steam turbines. The idea sounds like science fiction, yet Helion insists it is within reach. The challenging parts is how do you get that target, that initial fusion fuel, into the compression chamber and do it in a repeatable, symmetric, high-energy way. The question is whether its approach can overcome the same barriers that have stopped every other fusion project for more than 70 years. Helion Energy's main device is called the Trenta machine. It has often been described as secretive, though the company has publicly released data, videos and technical summaries about its results. The concept behind it is not entirely new. It is based on what is known as a Field Reversed Configuration, or FRC, a design that uses magnetic fields to compress and confine a plasma of charged particles. Scientists have been building and testing FRC machines since the 1960s. What makes Helion different is its claim that it can merge two plasma rings at extreme speeds, heat them to hundreds of millions of degrees, and capture the resulting energy directly as electricity. Helion's chosen fusion fuel is a mixture of deuterium and helium-3, two isotopes of hydrogen and helium. Deuterium can be extracted easily from seawater. Helium-3 is rare on Earth, but can be produced in small amounts through nuclear reactions. This fuel choice is often described as cleaner than the standard deuterium-tritium reaction used in most government-funded fusion projects. Unlike tritium, helium-3 is not radioactive and does not produce large quantities of high-energy neutrons. On paper, it seems like the perfect fuel for safe, sustainable fusion power. In practice, it is much harder. The deuterium-helium-3 reaction is much less reactive than deuterium-tritium. That means the atomic nuclei must collide with far greater force to fuse, which requires much higher temperatures or densities. A deuterium-tritium plasma can ignite at around 100 million degrees Celsius, while a deuterium-helium-3 plasma would need several times that temperature to reach the same reaction rate. The difference is enormous. If both systems were operated at the same temperature, the helium-3 version would produce roughly a thousand times less fusion power. Helion has claimed that its Trenta reactor has reached temperatures around 100 million degrees, which is impressive, but still far below what would be needed for effective deuterium-helium-3 fusion. Even if higher temperatures are achieved in future machines, the physical and engineering challenges grow rapidly with each increase. Materials must withstand more heat and magnetic stress, and energy losses through radiation become more severe. The combination of these effects makes the goal of net energy gain extremely hard to achieve. Another big problem is the fuel itself. Even though helium-3 fusion does not produce neutrons directly, the deuterium in the mix can still fuse with other deuterium atoms, creating neutrons and tritium as byproducts. These side reactions are unavoidable and occur frequently at fusion temperatures. The result is that any reactor using deuterium and helium-3 will still produce significant neutron radiation. Those neutrons pose a serious hazard because they penetrate most materials, making them radioactive over time. To protect workers and the environment, a fusion reactor must be surrounded by thick shielding, typically a meter of dense material such as steel or concrete. This shielding absorbs the neutrons and prevents them from escaping. However, the outer layers of the reactor still become radioactive as they absorb repeated neutron impacts. They must eventually be replaced or treated as nuclear waste. In images of Helion's prototype devices, there is no evidence of such heavy shielding. If the Trenta machine were producing energy at a true power plant level, the resulting radiation would make the surrounding structure highly dangerous. This is not a problem that can be ignored or designed away. 
It is a fundamental part of how fusion reactions behave. Even if the machine could somehow manage these issues, it would still face enormous technical hurdles. Helion claims to convert plasma motion directly into electricity, rather than using heat to drive a turbine. In theory, this could make fusion power more efficient, since each pulse of plasma would induce a current in surrounding coils. But the process is complicated by the fact that moving charged particles constantly emit radiation when they accelerate or slow down. This effect, known as Bremsstrahlung, or breaking radiation, drains energy from the plasma in the form of X-rays and other photons. Those photons escape easily, carrying away energy that cannot be recovered. For any fusion system, these losses become a serious obstacle, especially at the high temperatures required for helium-3 fuel. Hellion also claims to have observed unusual plasma behavior that doesn't match existing theoretical predictions, such as particles moving in larger orbits than expected. However, the physics of plasmas has been studied for decades, and the size of these orbits, called gyro radii, is well understood. Most likely, these differences arise from turbulence or drifts inside the plasma, phenomena that are common in magnetically confined systems. Many fusion experiments struggle with these effects, and they remain a leading cause of energy loss. Another concern is how Helion measures its results. Large public fusion projects spend years developing diagnostic tools to measure temperature, density, and energy output with precision. Their data is peer-reviewed and shared with the scientific community. Helion, being a private company, has published very few technical papers, making independent verification difficult. Without detailed diagnostics, claims of temperature or energy performance are hard to confirm. The lack of publicly available data leaves many experts skeptical of the company's progress. Despite these doubts, Helion keeps moving forward. Its engineers are building newer machines, each supposedly closer to achieving net energy gain. The company has announced plans for a full-scale prototype capable of producing commercial electricity within the next few years. Similar promises have been made before. Several times the company has stated that it would demonstrate a 50 megawatt system by specific target dates, but those milestones have repeatedly been delayed. Still, investors remain enthusiastic, seeing fusion as a potential breakthrough that could change the world's energy landscape. The excitement is understandable. Fusion power represents the ultimate clean energy source, the same process that powers the sun, capable of providing limitless energy without producing carbon emissions or long-term radioactive waste. The dream of harnessing it has driven scientists for generations. But the reality is that fusion physics remains stubbornly difficult. Every approach must confront the same fundamental problems. Maintaining the plasma long enough, keeping it stable, confining it magnetically, and overcoming enormous energy losses. No company or government project has yet succeeded in producing more energy from fusion than it consumes. Helion's approach, though ambitious, faces those same laws of nature. Using helium-3 instead of tritium avoids some complications, but adds many new ones. The fuel burns less readily, the temperatures required are much higher, and the secondary reactions still produce radiation that demands heavy protection. The process of capturing electricity directly from the plasma introduces additional challenges that no one has yet solved at scale. It is not impossible, but it is an undertaking that requires overcoming every major limitation that has defined fusion research for decades. There is, however, value in trying. Even if Helion never achieves commercial fusion, its experiments contribute valuable knowledge to plasma physics and engineering. Each test teaches something new about confinement, stability, and energy recovery. Ambitious attempts like these often pave the way for future progress, even if the original goal remains out of reach. The story of fusion is one of persistence, a long chain of failures and breakthroughs that inch humanity closer to mastering the process that powers the stars. For now, Helion Energy stands as one of the most visible symbols of that dream. Its goals are bold, its claims extraordinary, and its challenges enormous. 
Whether it succeeds or not, its work reminds the world how difficult true fusion energy really is. Science remains unforgiving, bound by the same physics that govern the sun itself. The idea of turning plasma into power is still as inspiring as it is demanding. And until those laws are conquered, fusion will remain a promise waiting to be fulfilled.